Okay, Dr. Mindy here. I want to talk to you today about your thyroid and what the ketogenic diet and fasting can do to heal your thyroid. So I've been getting this question a lot and really it pertains to what does keto and fasting do for your hormones in general. Um, but in my Resetter group, we're studying the Rushing Woman Syndrome book right now and today was the day that we looked at thyroid hormones. So I've done a lot of different videos on thyroid. You can go onto my YouTube channel and go back and look at those. I think what I really wanna to impart to you is that keto and fasting can have a dramatic effect on the thyroid, but it's not the complete picture. So let me kind of give you a complete picture and we'll talk about where keto and fasting fit into that. So the first thing to understand is that your thyroid problem often isn't even a thyroid problem. If, if your numbers on your TSH level, which is typically what your MD will measure, are off, many times it's not even a problem with the thyroid. It's a problem with the whole feedback loop. So you've got to start thinking, and, with, and this goes with the adrenals, this goes with your uh, whole endocrine system, your ovaries. There is this complete feedback loop that needs to be addressed. So when we go to the thyroid, we have to look at the hypothalamus and the pituitary. We look at the thyroid, we look at the liver, we look at the gut, and we look at the cell. Those are all the players that need to be healthy in order for you to have fantastic metabolism and for your thyroid to be working optimally. So a lot of my resetters, and if you guys are watching, asked what, what blood tests should you be looking at? What numbers should you be looking at? And when we run a panel of and look at someone's thyroid, we look at TSH, because that's what is secreted by the pituitary gland, we look at T4 because that's what's secreted by your thyroid, but then T4 has to go to your liver and to your gut to get converted into T3, so that that gives us an indication what's going on with those two organs, and then T3 has to go into the cell and actually has to create metabolism. So there are 11 different tests that we look at. If you want a list of those tests, just put thyroid tests in the comment section and I will make sure that you get the checklist that we have created. So you've got to look at this whole feedback loop. So I'm gonna, let me bring it back to keto and fasting. When you go into ketosis, what happens is that it starts to heal your liver and it starts to heal your brain. So ketosis is the state of when the blood sugar comes down and ketones come up, and that happens in your liver. Your liver is one of the most overworked organs in your body, and when it starts to spit off ketones, it's a much uh, easier, much more healing state for it to be in. Now, when those ketones get spit off, what's gonna happen is they're gonna go up to the brain and they're gonna start to heal your brain. So if you know that your uh, thyroid problem is coming from a pituitary issue, well gosh, being in a state of ketosis could be really healing to the brain and could start to, to create some repair that to, going on in that part of your brain. But again, it's not the complete picture. So TSH is in the brain, uh, T4 is in the thyroid, T3 is in the liver and in the gut, and then the cells really have to receive it. So when you're keto, what you're doing is you're healing the liver and you're healing the brain and you're also healing the gut. So we work a lot in my clinic with, with patients that have SIBO and candida and parasites and there is no better way to heal the gut than to get yourself in a state of ketosis as well. So keto can help there as well. Keto can also help with cellular repair. So yes, the answer is yes, a ketogenic diet can help all of these pieces but what I want you to see is that it's a bigger picture. It's when you have a thyroid problem, it's not just an issue with the thyroid. Okay, now let's talk about fasting. Now, when you go into these block fasts or you go into fast mimicking or you try dry fasting, what happens in those states is you really start to accelerate cellular repair. So if you're one of those people where you've done every blood test on the, you know, on the planet and you are completely normal with your thyroid tests and yet you're still holding on to weight, 
then yeah, you want to do ketogenic lifestyle and you want to look at some block fasts. You want to look at some extended fasting and some, some dry fasting. You can look at uh, fast mimicking is really popular right now. So you want to add that fasting piece in because it's going to heal your cells. If you know that you have an autoimmune thyroid like Hashimoto's and you know that that's partly because of your gut and you have an incredible dysbiosis in your gut, then oh my gosh, absolutely, fasting, longer fasting is gonna help repair that gut. So in those scenarios where you've either gotten a blood test that has shown that you're completely normal um, and yet you still feel horrible, you still feel like you have a thyroid problem, fasting's gonna be great. If you know you have an autoimmune thyroid, fasting is going to be great. Now here's the missing piece, and this is what keto and fasting do not do, is they do not help with the detox piece, the neurotoxins and the biotoxins that can block receptor sites. You're going to have to detox that stuff, and you can go look at my heavy metal um, talks that I've done on YouTube and, and see some of the ways that we go about detoxing heavy metals. But what we like to do is combine all three of those so that people get the ultimate result. Now, one last question I wanna address because this came up in my resetter group, which is what happens if your thyroid's been removed? So here's one of the things that frustrates me the most about the way we manage healthcare is we think that if an organ is not working, let's just remove it, let's get rid of it. But there was a dysfunction that happened in your body that created a scenario where that organ didn't work right. So if you remove that thyroid and you had, because you had a thyroid problem, you still have to work on healing the pituitary, the hypothalamus pituitary. You're still gonna have to work on healing the liver and the gut and you're still gonna have to work on the cells. So keto and fasting and doing some heavy metal and biotoxin detoxing will still be a, a, a real game changer for your health because just because they removed the, the organ doesn't mean that the lack of function is, is gone. So I see it all the time in my clinic where people are, have had organs removed and they still feel horrible. It's like they removed the organ, but they didn't solve the problem. So you're still gonna have to go in there and deal with that. The other question, and I, I'll finish up on this one, is what about medication? What if your MD told you you have to be on medication for the rest of your life? I'm gonna tell you the same thing. If you're taking levothyroxine, you're taking Synthroid, some of those other uh, armor, you still have to work with all the pieces of the loop. And that's where a door in, a, a healing door in for you could be keto and fasting. And then you're gonna, again, most of you who have thyroid conditions are gonna have to go and look at the heavy metal biotoxin piece of this. So I hope that helps. I, my heart goes out to you if you have a thyroid problem. I really see a lot of people that get bumped around the, the medical world trying to do different drugs, different surgery, and they get frustrated and, I, and know that there's a bigger picture. And once you understand your picture, you're, you will heal. You can absolutely heal from, from thyroid issues. If you want the blood tests that, that we recommend, the list of them, just put thyroid tests in there. I'll make sure you get them. If you want more information, just go into my resetter group. Uh, just put resetter and I'll invite you in. Um, and if you like this information, share it out. I do these videos because I'm trying to change uh, the way that health is being approached. I strongly feel that we have given so much power away to the doctors and we need to turn around and give it back to ourselves. We need to become our own doctor. And the only way you're gonna do that is through education. So if you resonate with this information, share it out. And as always, I hope that helps.